Hi everyone, this is Mindy for Lawn Fawn and my card project for you today is following along with the theme Lots of Hearts. So that is what I'm including in my card project today. The first thing that I'm going to do is stamp out my images. So I went through my stamp sets and I picked out some images that I thought would work well together. I have the jar and the lid that are coming from the set How You Bean. You can see it's very well loved. I have some bears from the Snow Much Fun stamp set. And then I did have some clouds on here. I don't end up using them. I thought I did, but my kind of idea for my card changed as I went along. But the clouds come from all the clouds stamp set. And then I'm going to ink these up in the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. And I'm stamping this down on some Hammer Mill cardstock. This is a super smooth cardstock. Now, I'm also going to add some hearts in my jar there. So I will be bringing in the How You Bean heart add-on. I just kind of placed that as far down towards the bottom of my jar as possible so I didn't need to do any masking. And I'm gonna ink those up with the Jet Black ink as well. I'm using my Copic markers today to color in my image. And for the jar, I am using BG11 and BG10. The BG11, which is the darker color, I'm adding to the outside of the jar to give it kind of that shadow look and then blending out with the BG10 so it kind of fades off into the white. Now for the lid, which I didn't necessarily have to do the lid, but I did want it to be separate just because I wanted to make it look a little bit more a 3D. So for that, I am using N6, N4, and N2. For the hearts in the inside of my jar, I wanted this to be a variety of shades. So I have some uh, red, I have a light pink, and a dark pink. Now the red that I'm using is our 29, 27, and 24. You can see that you, there isn't really much of a difference. It's kind of hard to see the shadow of it. So you could really probably get away with using maybe our 29 and our 24 if you're limited in your Copic markers. And I just kind of scattered that color combination around in the jar. Then I'm gonna move on to my light pink. And for this, I am using R32, R30, and R01. Again, if you wanted to limit your markers, you could do R32 and R01. With the reds and the dark pinks, I'm gonna try not to go over them too many times. They can be kind of temperamental is what I like to call them because they're just so saturated in color that they tend to bleed no matter what type of ink I'm stamping in. So with those, I'm going to try and just do one layer of color with them. Now for the dark pink, I have RV19, RV17, and RV14. Once again, if you wanted to kind of limit your supply, you could maybe do the RV17 and RV14. I'm just going to finish up coloring the hearts in my jar. And I do have another heart there kind of off on the side. I don't remember what I was going to do with that. I think maybe I was planning on putting that on the label because I did stamp the label out. But I, as you can see in the finished card project, I didn't end up doing that. But I am leaving the coloring in for the items that I didn't use. Now this one, I decided to go with kind of that lighter pink. So that one is the R32, R30, and R01. Then I'm going to move on to coloring the clouds. And what I thought would be really cute is just adding a pink outline to these instead of like my normal light blue that I would do. So I think this is really cute to do. I just didn't end up using those clouds today. I'm also going to add pink to the label. I thought if this is going to be a card that's featuring all the hearts, I'm just going to really go with this red and pink theme. So I did that R3230 and 01 color combination. And then I can move on to my bears, which these are just one of my favorite characters from Lawn Fawn. I'm using E44, 43, 42, and 41, which I know kind of sounds like a lot, but I really like how it goes from that really dark color and then I have it fading off into that lightest, which is the E41. And I do also end up using the E41 for the muzzle of the bears. Now, one of the reasons that I chose this set besides the fact that it's super cute is this mama bear right here. So it's just the top portion of her with her arms. And when I die cut it out, 
the die is going to cut it so that the arms have like little slits in them so I can slide something in there. Oh, that's what I was going to use the heart for. I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot what I actually used that heart for. I'm going to have that heart slid into the bear's hand. Can you tell it's been a little while since I filmed this video by the time I'm actually getting to the voiceover? So that was the whole point of me having that mama bear up there is so that I could slide a heart in between her arms. Then for my last bear here, I like to add the darkest color. So I'm giving it a round belly. So it looks like a nice little chubby baby bear that's jumping up for joy. And then after I have everything all colored in, there are coordinating dies for each of these. And you could fussy cut them out with scissors. I really like to take the coordinating dies, line them up and hold them down with post-it tape. I just really like the finished edge that the dies provide. Once everything is die cut out, I started to just get an idea of how this was all going to work. I was going to put the label over the top. There is my mama bear with that heart that she's holding. And then my two bears that are going to be on each side. So I have that in mind. And then I'm going to start on my background. Now this is actually take two of my background. I was going to do like a cloudy background, but I decided this brick stencil would be a really neat background. So I have some 80 pound white cardstock here. I took some repositionable tape and added it to the back to hold that down on my magnetic work surface. And then I placed the brick stencil over the top. Now my brick stencil is very well loved and it has pixie spray on the back, which is kind of a temporary sticky adhesive and it's still there. It doesn't wash off very well. So my stencil is still pretty sticky and I'm coming in with a blending brush and some manatee ink, which is just a really nice light gray. And I'm going to blend that over my entire background. I am totally okay if I don't get like complete, perfectly even coverage. I think the brick stencil looks better when it's uneven. Once I have this completely blended, I'm going to just remove that to reveal my brick background, which I love. And then I'm going to bring in a stencil. This is lots of hearts. So this is a two piece set and I'm placing the first layer over my background. I'll hold that down with my magnets. And then I'm going to ink blend over the top using guava ink. So I'll pick up some of that ink with my blending brush and just in circular motions, work my way down the front of the card, making sure to kind of go in both directions to get complete coverage. And I know that this isn't going to completely hide the brick stencil. I think that actually is a neat look. Now I'm going to bring in the second layer of the stencil. And for this one, I'm just going to kind of shimmy it around until those hearts are filling in the empty areas in the background. And I want to add some colored sparkle to this. So I'm using fairy dust glitter paste, and I just kind of smooshed down some ballet slippers onto a slick surface. I'm going to take my fairy dust and kind of smoosh that down into that ink that I applied on that slick surface and mix it up really well with my palette knife. So this is going to turn it a really light pink. Now, if I were to redo this, I probably would have grabbed guava or even cranberry, something a little bit darker. Now in person, I can see this really well on the front of my card, but in the video and in the pictures, it's a little hard to see. It tinted it pink, which I think is a super cool technique that you can do so you can really customize your glitter pastes. I picked up that mixture with my palette knife. I spread it all over my background. And then I'm going to clean off my palette knife with a baby wipe. And I'm also going to wipe up that surface right away. I don't want glitter paste to dry on anything, whether it be my surface or my palette knife. And then also on the stencil, I like to wash those off right away. So after I remove this and clean everything up, I'm going to just set it off on the side to dry. And I'm going to work on adding some detail to my hearts. Now in the heart add-on set for the How You Bean heart add-on, there are some really small little sentiments. I think there's even maybe some smiley faces on one of the How You Bean sets. I wanted to make these candy hearts. And the easiest way for me to do this was just grabbing a small acrylic block. I have my stamp chamois off on the side so I can just clean that up right away. And I also pulled out the sentiments that I want to use. So it makes it really quick to just change between the sentiments. I'm also stamping these on this silicone mat. It gives it kind of a cushion a little bit. And it also helps me so that my uh, jar there isn't sliding all over my glass work surface. I know some of these will probably get covered up by my label that I'll add, but I'm still going to go ahead and do it just in case something is peeking out or depending on where I put my label. 
So after I get all of these added on, I'm also going to pick up a sentiment and I'm going to stamp that right on the label. So this is just going to say you're sweet, not necessarily a Valentine's card. I'm not going to put any I love you's on here. So I can give this to anybody I want, whether it's friends or relatives. I can just have a nice, sweet I, um, hug sentiment on here. To frame my card project, I am using the Portrait Heart Garland die set. I die cut it twice out of 80 pound white cardstock and layering that together with some liquid glue. And then I'm also going to add uh, one of these rectangles. This is from the stitched rectangle and that's just going to kind of give it more of a finished look. Off on the side, my background I found is nice and dry. So I'm just going to trim a little bit off of each edge so that there's nothing, uh, none of that glitter paste is kind of poking off of the side. This is just going to clean that up a little bit. And then I can add the liquid glue all around my heart garland border and also onto those little hearts. And I'm place this over the top of my background. Now this is something that you want to maybe put something heavy on top of it because we do have some texture on this background with the glitter paste. So I would just set something heavy on that, give it a few minutes, and now I can finish kind of completing my scene. So to do that, I just took some tape runner and I added the lid to the top of the jar. This is gonna sit right in the middle of my card project. So I wanna pop this up a little bit because there isn't a lot of dimension going on. So I'm going to take some foam squares and add that to the back of my jar. I'm also adding some thin foam squares to the back of my label and then I can place that over the top of my jar. For my Barrett that I'm gonna have kind of coming over the top of that lid, I'm gonna take that heart and I'm just adding a little bit of tape runner to the very top of it. And I'm going to just place that right in the heart, so or right in the arms of the bear. So it looks like the mama bear has this cute little heart that she's holding for her kids. And then I'm going to take a little bit of liquid glue, add that to the very bottom, and attach that to the top of the lid. So I like to do this first, and then I can add a couple more foam squares to the back of the bear. And then all of this will be popped up on the front of the card. Then for the baby bears... What I'm going to do is those are also going to get popped up, but I also want them to kind of overhang the jar there. So anything that is going to touch the jar, I'm only going to add some liquid glue to. Any part of the bear that is going to hang off of that jar is going to have foam squares. And I'll do that for both. So here I have a little baby bear that's kind of reaching up to the mama with that candy heart. And I have the other one that is just plain old excited for a jar of candy. So then the last thing that I need to do is add a sentiment and I really like using the long distance hugs. So I'm placing this down onto some peacock cardstock and I'm going to prep the cardstock with my anti-static powder tool and ink up my sentiment using the Lawn Fawn Yeti pigment ink. So I'll just gently stamp that down. My Yeti ink is pretty well loved. I'm going to have to get a re-inker. So I'm going to stamp that down twice. And then I'll sprinkle on some white embossing powder, tap off any excess back into my container, and then I can bring in my heat tool and melt that embossing powder. Now, one of the reasons I love this set so much, other than the fact it has some really cute sentiments on here, is it has coordinating dies for the word hug. So I die cut that out, and I also die cut it out a couple more times from that same peacock cardstock and layer that together so it's going to lift it up from my background a little bit. Then I can add some liquid glue and I can place this over the top right above my mama bear's head. So it's going to be on that heart garland. I really love this kind of pop of teal over the top of my pink and red background. Now the last finishing touch I'm going to do is just take a white gel pen and add some highlights to my bears. So that will finish off my card project for you today. If you have some ink pads and some of that fairy dust glitter paste, Definitely give this a try. It's a lot of fun and in person it looks pretty cool. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have an amazing day.